Hello, Tungsten Miner here. I wanted to uh, record a quick video to catch up on everything that's been changing around the house here. Uh, two big things to talk about. First is this big area over here, and then the second has to do with these poles over here. So I'm going to start off with the poles. You may remember last time I talked about uh, that mill house down there and how I recently completed it and got all the uh, power and whatnot installed. Well, the end result of that was that I was filling up a capacitor down here at the mill house, but obviously I wasn't taking any advantage of it, and the uh, capacitor quickly filled up, and that was that. So now what I've got is a series of power poles and power lines that move the power back up to the main house. So uh, quickly, just a reminder here, we've got our kinetic dynamo with the water wheels on the opposite side of that wall. That produces power, goes through the current transformer, uh, I'm still filling a capacitor up at the house, so we can see there's power transferring. That's going into here, which is being drained off by the power lines. Uh, this is coming out an LV wire connector, going up a LV wire. And at the very, very top there, there's an LV wire relay, uh, which you remember is made using basically the same formula, but cheaper. This is a wooden post, uh, which is just a nice... Uh, P-O-S-T post... Uh, a nice decorative block that um, Worship Engineering adds. So it's treated wood, stone bricks. Treated wood is just treated sticks and stuff in the usual recipe. Uh, and then underneath here, this is a chisels and bits um, seared bricks. So the Tinker's Construct seared bricks uh, have a pattern which almost exactly matches the bottoms of these wooden posts from Immersive Engineering. Kind of funny that two different mods should have such... Uh, perfectly matching textures, but they do. So, using chisel and bits, I made this just a bit wider, one step wider, so that I can jump up onto that, jump up onto that, and then the post actually works a lot like a ladder if you're on the right side of it. So you can climb up to the top here and I'd service the wires. So then what I did is um, I took the LV wire, and you just right-click on this guy, and then right-click on the other guy with the wire in hand, and it will say linking. And then you just go from wire to wire to wire, hooking them all up. So now let me walk back up to the house here. Okay, here we are at the last pole. And this last wire connects down to another LV capacitor, which is getting filled up by the water mill. Now one thing to know, immersive engineering wires do lose some power. So I'm actually probably losing like a really significant amount of power between the mill house and here. Um, I'm going to build a little device later on and figure out exactly how much power I'm losing, and I'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but needless to say, this is not a great setup. <laughs> Having things so far away means I'm losing a tremendous amount of power. But I know I'm going to be setting up something else to get more power later. This is just my trickle power, and so I'm not too concerned about it. The other problem that I'm a little more concerned about is that since that's so far away, it's actually in a different set of chunks. Uh, so Dynamic Surroundings, one of the mods that I have, um, adds the crow sounds and other things, also adds this, uh, which is kind of a replacement for NEI's uh, chunk boundaries. So here as I walk through, you can see I've got one chunk here and here, splitting right down the middle there, that uh, defines the edge of where the house is. I've also got a chunk loader. I'll go peek at that guy here. Uh, and I buried it right here. So this chunk loader comes from a mod called Persistent Bits, which adds just this one block. Um, I normally use um, chicken chunks uh, and the chunk loader from that, but uh, I wanted to try this one just to see how it worked and you know try something different. The This one does not have an interface, unlike the chicken chunks loader. All it really does when you click on it is adds these uh, glass, glass rods that... Um, basically just show you where the, chick the the chunks are that are being loaded. And you notice the rods are in the center of the chunks that are loaded, not at the edges or the corners or anything else. So uh, the one mod adds the rods, and the other mod adds the boundaries. So I can kind of see, like, every chunk that's got a glass rod through it is uh, being loaded. And as I walk over here, we can see that this chunk has the glass rods in it. But uh, this chunk does not, this next one over here. What that means, of course, is that none of the rest of these chunks are guaranteed to be loaded when I go on a trip or walk away or leave the game or anything like that. 
which means my power source is only operational so long as those chunks happen to be loaded. Um, and so that's another reason why it's inconvenient that it's so far away. I'm going to have to make myself another one of those chunk loaders uh, in order to get this. Uh, and the chunk loader from Persistent Bits, you know, there's a couple of chunk loading kinds of things, various mods. This particular one, you start with enchantment table, so obsidian, diamonds, just Villanelle Minecraft enchantment table. And then you basically build the thing again with the enchantment table in the middle, except instead of a book, you need an ender pearl at the top. Uh, and, uh, you know, not exactly a cheap recipe, right? Four diamonds worth and an uh, ender pearl to be able to make this thing. Um, but what it does get you is uh, a pretty decent chunk loader. Um, you know, I've got to say, I kind of like the chicken chunks one better. Uh, if I were making this mod pack again, I might change it. Uh, because this one, you can't change the shape and size. You uh, don't have the nice little laser effect that uh, doesn't tamper with your world. And um, you can make a much larger area that gets chunk loaded. Uh, so it's not just five by five. Uh, any case, I do have a uh, mod spotlight video on chicken chunks if you want to check that out and see how it works. Um, persistent bits is just so simple. I don't know as I'd I'd make one, uh, but yeah, worth trying it out and seeing how it works. Uh, in any case, so the power then comes in to this battery down here, which is now fully loaded. And over here, I've added a little trap door that goes down to a set of service tunnels. Now, these did not exist when I built the original house. This is just a dirt hillside. So this was all carving out the tunnels from the dirt and stone underneath. As we can see, though, here's the other side of that capacitor. And I've set myself up with leadstone flux ducts. These are the lowest uh, version of flux ducts that uh, thermal expansion has to offer. Uh, but they are also the cheapest to make, and they can be upgraded. So starting off with redstone, lead, and any kind of glass, you get yourself six leadstone flux ducts. You can then upgrade these by taking them, adding some more redstone and invar in order to get the hardened flux duct. The difference is the leadstone ones transmit 1,000 RF per tick, and these transmit 4,000 RF per tick. The next step up, these redstone energy flux ducts transmit a lot more but the recipe is completely different, and you can't upgrade from one to the other. So here you need to build these guys. This is any kind of hardened glass. Uh, hardened glass is basically any kind of metal, one ingot's worth, with four obsidian dust, and that gets you that kind of hardened glass. The obs yeah, here we go. Uh, in the pulverizer, you take one chunk of obsidian, and you get four pulverized obsidian. So basically what the hardened glass recipe amounts to is one ingot of metal and one block of obsidian gets you two pieces of glass. Then you take this thing and you have to uh, melt down some destabilized redstone and then pour that into the flux duct, the empty flux duct that you made. So this is going to require a magma crucible and a fluid transposer and you know, all the materials for doing this, a pulverizer and an induction smelter. So all of the, basically all of the thermal expansion machines in order to produce this one item. I do have them, but I don't need that much power to be moving around in my house yet. So I'm just going to hold off on doing that. There are even more powerful flux ducts to be had, so uh, you can keep going from there. The nice thing about these guys, though, uh, is uh, once you've made them, you can also pulverize them. And you're going to get back... Um, I haven't worked out the math. I think this is all of the materials. Certainly, it's all of the redstone that went into it, and I think all of the invar, but you lose the lead. Um, you only get the invar back again. Uh, yeah, that's all the invar. So you lose the lead, but you get back all of this. You lose the glass. Um, but, you know, hey, this is going to last me a good long while, and... I can upgrade them once and they'll last me a good while longer still. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as a solution for the time being. Um, it's unlikely I'm going to need to move more than 4,000 RF per tick around in any case. Uh, let me take a quick nap here, it's starting to get dark. Okay, these tunnels then proceed underneath. Oh, and you can see I used chisels and bits to carve a nice little arch and even have the arch go around corners. Uh, here's an example of where there's a side tunnel that goes off to another energy cell that's serving, this is my crafting room just above me here. Uh, so all of my various machines are up there. And then this just goes in a loop and comes around back on the other side over there. 
so that if any room in the house needs power, I've now got a fairly accessible uh, conduit. One of the things ultimately I'll want to do is to make it so that the power coming into the house all comes to a central battery room, and then all of the power being used in the house comes out of that battery room. So unlike my situation now, where I've got one battery coming in, going around, and then a different battery, um, if I put in another machine, like over in that room, it can't share the power that's stored in the battery over there. Uh, and I'd kind of like for it to be able to do that. So eventually I will get around to doing that, but not quite yet. Anyway, that uh, is basically my power situation at the moment. Uh, so let's talk about the other stuff I've been doing. You may recall, uh, last time I came out this door, there was a very short little ramp. It was only like two or three meters long. And obviously I've extended it. So that's the same length and the same um, slope as the ramp on the other side there. I then made this road, which you remember last time I was here, there was just a, uh, a line of trees, basically, a line of fruit trees, and then a line of uh, birch trees, and a line of spruce trees, and a big uh, jungle tree right here. So I've cleaned all that up. That was always intended to be a temporary situation while I figured out what my garden is going to wind up looking like. And I built this road so that it defines this little field that's right next to my place. And I picked this knowing that there's this nice flat area. Um, it looks a lot more rugged than it is. Remember, this is only a one meter difference. So really, it's a total of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meters from the top to the bottom of this field. So pretty darn flat. Uh, and then I built this wall around it, uh, which will define the boundaries of um, pens for animals, uh, fields for growing thing, agri-craft agri crops, um, some kind of arboretum, a little bit of an orchard. I was thinking maybe I'll have some kind of pond in the middle with a stream coming in from off the hill somewhere. Uh, still working through those plans, but I did decide on the design of the road, and I did design on the design of the wall. So the road is just the same road that I've had uh, elsewhere, and we talked about a bunch. The wall is, of course, chisels and bits. So under here, that's a full block of migmatite cobblestone. And then on top of that, I've got this shape here, which is uh, inset by three on both sides, and then has a little bit of a footer down there. And then going up has a little bit of a cap, and then the top is limestone, carved to be just a little bit of a rounded kind of top there. And then the, oh, that one's not complete. I have to come back and fix that. Uh, and then the caps use the same kind of arch just in all directions and they use the migmatite bricks in a square. And every time the wall has to drop down a meter, I put in one of these columns and then have the wall match up with this so that I can, if I'm careful, manage to jump up onto the wall and get it back and forth. But mobs aren't going to be able to do that. And honestly, in this mod pack, that's not really much of a problem anyway. The angled bezeled side here is basically the same thing except turned 45 degrees, which makes it a bit more awkward uh, to place. I wound up using a lot of my positive chisel design to copy and paste and copy and paste all the way up and down this wall here. I did, you notice, flatten out the terrain so I didn't have to deal with going up and down and at an angle at the same time. <laughs> that seemed like more than I wanted to cope with. Um, but apart from that, the wall now extends over this pretty large field going all the way around. Oh, um, I left this off so that uh, I could show a cross-section. So you can see this footer is the same on both sides, and then this little cap here is all the way through. And eventually uh, what I will do is uh, I'll use my positive chisel design to go grab the corner from this guy. In fact, just a second, let me go grab one and then uh, I'll show you how that works. Here I am at the far corner. So this is a uh, slightly different configuration than the posts that are in the middle because this is a corner post. And so you can see the boundary of the block is right there, leaving two bits worth of the migmatite cobblestone as well as the migmatite brick right next to it. And then the same thing over here. And for all of these other ones, all the other columns there, they're all in a line, they're not curved. So this is the one I need to copy. I happen to know that this is three meters tall, so one, two, three, 
Uh, I deliberately kept that cap to be fitting within this block so I wouldn't have an extra one. And now let's go back to the other corner. Here we are. So I have my positive chisel design. Since I want to place the block down, I don't want to re replace something that's there. I'm going to just change it to placement mode. And I'm going to uh, make sure I'm facing the same direction as I was lined up before. So I was facing before where the wall was coming in to the right and then advancing and directly in front of me. And now I need to right click to just stick that in there. Problem is, of course, I don't have any bits in my inventory. I've got two empty chiseled bit bags. So what I need to do first is to give myself some raw material to work with. Uh, so I'm going to put down the leftovers from the last time I was working of those two different kinds, three different kinds. And I brought along some extras just in case I need them. I don't know that I will. I might we need more of these. So I'll give myself some more of those. Uh, yeah. And then I brought myself a chisel. So I'm going to change my chisel to same material mode so I can scoop up the entire collection of all of those. Now I've got myself a bunch of bits and I should be able to just use my pattern. So facing the same way and I can even look and see, right? There's uh, just a hint of the cobblestone sticking out directly in front and to my left. So I click and there it goes, switch to my next pattern change it also to the placement mode because each one has its own placement mode. Drop that in there, change this one over, and then uh, I kind of need to hop a bit to get the right place and stick it on there. And that gives me my nice corner. And since the other pieces were already correctly made to line up precisely, I've now got the whole thing finished off. So simple example, but that's how it works. Uh, and then the thing that I've gotten in the habit of doing, I should say, uh, when I'm done with this sort of thing and I want to clean out my inventory and be finished, is I select each individual block, change it to the plane mode, and then build up as tall a stack as I can until that particular kind runs out. Stopping, of course, at um, the 16 bits tall or one full block tall. So I, I didn't need that extra block, it turns out. Uh, this one you can see I ran out and it just stopped placing them about there. That one finished. I hear a little pop when it does that because uh, inventory tweaks is switching this into the same position for me. Which is a little bit annoying in this case actually. And that's it. So now my inventory is completely empty and I'm just going to grab my pickaxe and pick up these blocks. Now the reason I bother about doing this and not just leave them as bits in my bag is that they take up a lot more space in my inventory in bit form. This, they take up exactly one item, exactly one spot. Whereas in bit form, they take up many, many spots in these chiseled bits bags, especially something like this, which is nearly full. Um, so yeah, it's a much better idea to get them back into that form for whenever you're done working with things and need to clean out your inventory. Just a moment here. Okay, so that is uh, basically what's going on with the wall here. And I've talked a little bit about what I intend to do inside the wall. I've talked through the new stuff with the power system and uh, that situation. So I think that's kind of everything I've done so far recently. Um, definitely have a lot more thinking to do about what's going to go on inside this wall. I've got some vague ideas, as I said, but uh, nothing quite worked out yet. Um, and as for power, what I really want to do in this mod pack is um, work with Immersive Petroleum. Uh, it's a new mod to me that I haven't tried before, and it seems really interesting. But um, there's a lot of resources required to build a diesel engine and to build the, gosh, all the different parts for, you know, searching for oil and drilling for oil and storing the oil and processing the oil. So yeah, that will take a little while, <laughs> but uh, once I get there, I will have a full-on diesel engine with a full supply of oil actually right here in my base in one of the big rooms, and um, this will just be to keep things running, you know, little things charged up that need them, um, and so yeah, it won't matter that I'm losing such a large chunk of my power by using these uh, cables going such a long distance. Um, anyway, that's it for now then. Uh, if you like the video, hit like. If you want to know when that next video is ready, hit subscribe. And I will talk to you later.